Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucklight here, and we are continuing our trivia nights with uh, You Don't Know Jack. Now, this is version 4, and uh, this will be the last one I play until I get back into Treasure of the Rudras. Uh, full disclosure here, um, it is 3 in the morning, and I am beyond tired. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to get this one done. Uh, if you're looking for cutting-edge trivia skill, you're not going to find it here at this point. <laughs> I'm just beyond exhausted. But I figured, I figured it would be fun to watch just me fumble and destroy my brain with this. So uh, let's do it. Let's see how far, how much money I can make or lose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so this is version 4 of the ride. Welcome to the ride. I understand you're handy with the slow motion control. I'm afraid that won't do you much good down on the floor you're headed to. How many of you are there? One player? Great. I'll keep you company. How many questions would you like to play? Seven or thirteen? Okay, great. Type your name. That was weird. It switched to thirteen. Wonderful. That's Thanks. fine. If you feel like buzzing, use the letter B. Enjoy the ride. See you at the bottom. So I wonder if, uh... Actually, I don't wonder anything. This is gonna be wacky. Cartoons, huh? Well, let's see how much we can slip past the censors. I wonder what happens if right, I practice saying the seven mm. naughty words and let's take on censorship. All right, here we go. Now select the highest value and see if you hit the jackpot. Okay, give it up for. Not even close, but all right. More like censorship. Guess the magic number here is 3565. Could be your lucky number. Let's find out. If today's censors had the same job duties as the first Roman censors, which of these would they be doing? Torturing the doors, photographing Robert Maplethorpe, sentencing the Smothers Brothers to prison, or counting copies of Hustler? Uh. 41, 42. How does she do that? Uh, I mean, that, that, that's disgusting. Don't look. Oh, nice. I was right. The original censors took census, which means they can't. Oh, censors, yeah. And they right. took a break to read the articles. So this one may be fast. Buzz in for the cash. This one's called. Keep your censorship on Weird amount of numbers, parts. too. Of uh, uh, money. You know, political correctness has gotten way out of hand. There's even a human muscle named the PC muscle. Mm. If you're having problems with your PC muscle, what's the best PC term to use in describing it? The urinarily challenged muscle, the anally capable muscle, the mammarily fixated muscle, or the muscles from Brussels? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'll, I'll skip it. Alright, let's take a look at the right answer. The PC oh, muscle, pee -pee. or the pubococcygeal muscle, controls the flow of urine from the bladder and contributes to greater sexual pleasure in women, without offending anyone at all. Aww. Okay, hit your buzzer, try Here's your category. Censorship and hardwood. This one's a lot different than and right this way, I'm please. used to. If you tie a blue ribbon around the old oak tree, what cause are you supporting? Freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of expression online, or NAMBLA? <laughs> NAMBLA. It's yours now, oh, for God's sake. Nope. 
In case you're wondering, I just press. The Blue oh. Ribbon campaign is for free speech online. You should consider publishing photos of your oak tree on your homepage, because none of the online freaks will ever go outside to see it. Really? I did not know it was an online okay, thing. Select the value of the Coming up. I'll wash your thesaurus out with soap. Uh, you gotta get your score on the plus side here. Let's go. Which of these is not a dirty word? Swatternly, abluted, bedraggled, or squalid? Go for it! Complete guess. Abluted means washed clean. Nice. Got it. No, it's not really dirty. Unless you say something is f***ing abluted. Alright, bang your buzzer and... Are you sitting down? Well, of course you are. You're at a computer. At any rate... I could be standing. Well, wouldn't you know it? It's time <laughs> to play this or that. The category for this this or that is... I see no evil, but I can smell it a mile away. Okay, I'm gonna list off seven people, and for each one, I want you to tell me if they're... Someone who sees no evil, someone who hears no evil, or someone who neither sees nor hears evil. Ooh, this evil. one's gonna be harder. A lot harder than the ones I'm used to. As each one comes up, if it's someone who just sees no evil, press 1. If it's someone who just hears no evil, press 2. If it's both, Is it gonna be like three. people who are blind versus if people who are sure, deaf? Press four. And Helen if Keller's right third? Answer, you get some cash. Oh. Alright. For each one you get wrong or that you don't get to. Okay, you have 30 seconds to get all of them. And keep an eye on the wire. When it fills up, you're done. Let's do it. Stevie Wonder sees no evil, hears no evil. Marley Matlin. Helen Keller. Yep. Oedipus. Oh no, he has eyes. I don't know that one. Well, you got five right, which is sort of like, eh, eh. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. let's throw that cash into your total. Right, I have to admit, I'm not having as much fun as the last three. <laughs> but who knows? You could pick up. All right, that's all right. Okay, here's your category. Tipper Gore. Okay, play ball. Say Tipper Gore treats her husband Al to a $50 dinner. If Tipper Gore is a good tipper, what is the smallest amount she should leave as a tip? $5, $7.50, $8.75, or $10? Go get it! $7.50? Hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be the customary 15% tip. Yep. Which leaves her and Al just enough money to buy a few Two Life Crew albums to burn when they get home. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, in my personal life, I flip out if I don't tip. <laughs> there was one time I didn't tip, and you know, I mean, if you're if you're working a restaurant, you deserve it, honestly. Well, considering you didn't even buzz in, I'm giving you a break here. That was cool. I understand moral, but what's turpitude? You know that song by Ice T called "Cop"? C hey, lady, you, you can't come in here. What are you? Hey, don't put. Th what, what are you? Ow! I'm covered in stickers. Here, look at this. Ow, my short hairs. Mm. Parental advisory explicit lyrics. Who's going around slapping these stickers on everything? The Take it! Now, the FCC would come in if I got a radio show. But oh, why right. I want to hide this bond from my fans. I think it's the PMRC. Here's the one you wanted. Yeah. The Tipper Gore and the Parents Music Resource Center campaign for the little warning labels on albums. And I have half a mind to take this sticker and shove it up the ass of those mother goody goody, no good, have nothing better to do, head, moral majority monkey suckers with a frozen boot. Now, there's an explicit warning. Damn. <laughs> Alright, it's. Hey, can't be too disappointed with that. Here's your category. You have the right to remain silent and minty. Mmm, minty flavor. Oh, you want to see the question? Yeah, me too. Here we go. What issue would Scope's monkey trial most likely involve? Slander of the healing power of mouthwash? Bootlegging, rinsing, and spitting? Immigrating bacteria that causes bad breath? Or the evolution of green coloring? Go for it! 
The original Scopes Monkey Trial took place when enlightened Tennesseans jailed biology teacher John Scopes for teaching evolution. Yep. Apparently creationists also believe that fresh breath is an act of God. <laughs> okay, buzzing and we're calling this one. My fellow congressmen, try the veal. Here we go. Considering the specific issue to which congressional gag rules pertain, which of these gag artists' acts would be censored? Rip Taylor organizing a union, Henny Youngman petitioning against slavery, Milton Berle lobbying for Medicare, or Red Skelton dodging the draft? Uh... I have no idea. I'm gonna let that one pass. Oh, look what I have here. The correct answer. <laughs> Until they were deemed unconstitutional, gag rules in the House of Representatives prevented members from considering anti-slavery petitions. Wow. I'm learning a lot of stuff in the middle of the night here. Could I interest you in some roadkill? Now, what is this? Alright, let me tell you how this game works. I can show you various pairs of things that are somehow related. And you're gonna see a series of items that may or may not connect the pair. You gotta buzz in to select the item you think correctly joins the two. There's a thousand bucks in it for you if you're right, but do choose wisely. You lose a thousand every time you're wrong. Okay. And there's gonna be a bonus question worth some bonus cash. This is gonna be I tough as hell. I say you should pay close attention to all the correct answers. You got that? Good. Let's motor. An essay in plank or plastic bag. What do these two things have in common? All right. Washington's teeth and planky plank pecker. Wood. Come on, give me wood. Score. Turns into diamonds and plank miner's daughter. Coal. Use it and means cause it. Farts, gas, <laughs> farts, cars use farts. Tampa NHL team and go breeze plank. Lightning. Score. Depressed Michigan City and skin blank equals miser. Flint. This isn't so bad. Box cars. Match. Okay, it's bonus time. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all NWA album titles? Nope. Public utilities? Nope. FCC 730 words? Nope. Paperwood, coal, gas, yeah. Everything you need to burn a bunch of bucks. Nice. What the current score looks like. Let's keep going. Yeah, those matchup games usually get me good money. Comstocks and bondage. Here's the question. If you don't put much stock in the Comstock law, what will you probably do? Stage pornographic performance art, take pornographic photos of yourself, publish pornographic photos on the internet, or mail porno mags to your buddies. I want to say it's one, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk that because I don't know for sure. Well, what do we have here? Also known mm, as the Porno Federal Anti-Obscenity Act, the Comstock law bans the mailing of indecent materials. You know, it was, uh, it was just too distracting for the postal carriers. Uh. Okay, hit your buzzer and try to snag the... Oh yeah, now we're talking. Oh wow. And here's what we're talking about. Low prices every day. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. Where is Walmart headquartered? Murfreesboro, oh. Tennessee, Troy, Michigan, Bentonville, Arkansas, or Shreveport, Louisiana? Oh man. I don't know. I think it's Arkansas. Well, 
Okay. I'm not gonna risk you that much money. This. It was Arkansas. Arkansas. Yep, that be Bentonville, all right, right there in Arkansas. Mm. Hit your buzzer to select the. Yeah, so it's only 13 questions on this, so shorter episode, I guess. Welcome to the Jack Attack. I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of words up on the screen. Buzz in when you see two items on the screen that match. Each time you're right, you make money. Each time you're wrong, you lose it. Now here's the thing. Not any two items that go together are necessarily a match. Remember the clue. It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. This music. Sensory overload. Remember, the match has to follow the clue. Good luck. Alright, here we go. Oh, it was touch. Missed it. I missed that one too. <laughs> Time wasting. No, oh, I missed that. It was taste. Yeah, I got it. Nope. Oh, I think it was Boston Common. Damn it, I'm missing all these. There we go. Crap. I didn't mean to hit it. Alright, I didn't do bad, but I didn't do good. I think it was sixth. Yeah. Anything else? No. Oh, so close! Uh, just as well, no one was around to see it anyway. Yeah, I did okay. <laughs> I didn't do great, but I did okay. Just less questions on this one. Time now for a page from the success journey with motivational speaker and full-time dreamer, Dr. Harvey Bass. Let me tell you the story of a small farm boy from Alaska. He grew up in poverty, often cold, often hungry, many times forced to eat his own hair for sustenance. His father, a proud man, eked out a living raising caribou. Anyway. All right, so. <laughs> All right. That was, uh, You Don't Know Jack. The last one was kind of a lot different from the previous three, but, uh, and it had far less questions, but I'm okay with that, because it's 3 a.m., <laughs> and I need to get some sleep. But, on the next episode, we are going back into Treasure of the Rudras, and, uh, we might come back to this. If there's a, uh, if people want to see more of this, um, I can, I, I have a few other You Don't Know Jack games I can throw on. Um, I have the sixth version. I think I don't know what the fifth version is. I think it just doesn't have a number. I might. I have a whole bunch. I have like sports and head rush and just a whole lot of these games. So you know, I can pop one in at any time if people want me to play them. So just let me know, I guess. But either way, we're going back into Treasure of the Rudras. We're gonna finish that, and then we'll f have that off our chest, and we can move on to uh, bigger and better things. Hopefully, hopefully better things. But anyway, um, I've had a lot of fun with this, so, uh, you know, if you want to see it again, just let me know. I have no problems playing more You Don't Know Jack. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, see you next time, I guess. <laughs> My name is Lucklight, thank you for watching, and have a good one.